back to Women Making Moves, where we celebrate the moves that women are making. My name is Amy Pons. I'm a master certified life coach and a spiritual healer. I'm joined today with Ilana Rontea. Ilana is a speaker, trainer, writer, women's empowerment coach, human resources professional, people enhancer, entrepreneur, and world traveler. She is passionate about helping women who are on the path of self-growth and development, assisting them in overcoming self-imposed obstacles and barriers. One of the ways she has done this is by creating and administering an online Facebook community of over 700 international women and growing who are also on this path of self-discovery and empowerment. Another way is by sponsoring female children in the developing world since 1997. Ilana has a professional CAT, Cognitive Analytic Therapy Diploma, Associate Certification in Human Resource Management, an honors bachelor of arts degree and train the trainer certification. She has worked as an onboard human resources manager on cruise liners, where she provided soft skills training and extensive onboarding, as well as coaching and counseling the staff and management. When speaking or conducting training, Ilana is both inspiring and holds a vision of the possibilities for those watching or listening. Her superpower lies in her keen ability to see the sometimes hidden potential in others and guide them on their transformational journey. Ilana, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I hear so many similarities in what we do, and I think it's beautiful. There's not enough of us. We need more. (laughs) I totally agree. Absolutely. We extract the unique brilliance of women that have been conditioned or trained out. So tell me about the moves that you're excited to be making right now. So there's there's three things I want to tell you about. First of all, my business partner and I have an organization We have a company that works with progressive organizations. Right now, we've been working in Europe. And so we go in and we work with their female staff who are not on the leadership track. And we help them develop themselves in ways that are more empowering. So getting rid of negative self-talk and negative self-beliefs and really encouraging a very positive mindset because we think that that helps them expand both personally and professionally. So we've been working in Europe so far, but we would really like to extend into North America. So that's the first thing that uh, that's on the table for us. The second thing that we've decided to do is to add to our offer. We already have a lot of value that we give to our clients and our participants. We have 27 hours of live online training with myself, as well as three hours of group coaching that follows the courses that we do. So we teach three courses. We teach self-confidence boundary setting, and communications. So after each of these courses is finished, I do a a group coaching to embed the learning. And now we've added to our offer so that we want to provide continued support for the participants for up to six months after the training is finished. Because as you know, training, once you do it, unless you start to practice those things that you've learned and you keep using the practices and knowledge and information, it poof, it goes out the window. So for six months, what I'm going to start doing is sending emails, very brief reminders, practices, and encouragement to the participants so that the learning continues to be kept top of mind and that they're encouraged to keep going with what they've learned until it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, of course, that's no longer necessary. But up until it does, we think six months of additional support will be very helpful to everyone involved. One of the things that I'm seeing in women that I serve is that, and I'm not a big fan of the phrase, get out of your own way. I'd love your thoughts on that. I don't love that because it suggests that a woman is doing something inherently wrong and she's not. It's due to a lot of the the way that the world presents itself to us and these limitations that are set upon us before we even get here. So what we've discovered, and this is supported by research and also our own personal lived experience and that of many women that we know, is that women are programmed since very little about how they should think about themselves, how they should behave in the world, the ideas they should have, what's possible, what's not possible, all sorts of things that are very Mm self-limiting. And this is reinforced throughout our lives from all sorts of sources. So it's family, it's religion, it's mass media, especially now mass media, it's culture, ethnicity. There's so many different points where this kind of conditioning comes from. So the key, as you say, is to realize that we have these beliefs because as long as they're in the unconscious, there's nothing we can do about it. 
These are just programs running in the background and we suddenly find ourselves doing something that is detrimental. And we think, why did I just do that? Because it's in the unconscious, right? So we bring these things up to consciousness and then we begin to work with them. Is this really true? Is it true that I'm not capable? Is it true that I'm not worthy? Is it true that I should just be quiet? So once we begin to unravel this, it starts to look very different, right? It's exactly what you were saying. Absolutely. Yeah. And then once we do that, then when we decide, yeah, these beliefs are actually not serving me, we start to install more positive beliefs, more life affirming beliefs, right? Because that those are true. Exactly. That are absolutely true. That will support us in moving forward. That's absolutely right. Because that's what typically happens, and this is super simplistic, high level, what I find that happens is that our mind is overpowering what our heart knows to be true in many cases. So our mind will be like, mm, you can't do that. Heart's like, yes, you can. And so it's like reconciling the two. So some of the things I say is like, let's move from head to heart. Let's check in, see what's going on there. And what's incredible is the moment you physically like literally move that energy or that thought from head to your heart and a lot of times it just like bursts into what is actually true and you're able to kind of organically not silence the mind but like symbiotic like working together to say I hear, right? you. I hear you and I know I can do this yeah exactly and once you you have the heart and mind coherent then the self-doubts and the self-judgments and self-criticism that is often so harsh, you know, some of that can, can actually be not so strong anymore. It can, it can start to slowly fade away. I can tell you for myself, I don't beat up on myself anymore. I don't have a harsh inner critic anymore. Of course I make mistakes. That's just being human. Yeah. So sometimes I think, hmm, you know, that didn't go as well as it could have. Is there something we can do next time? What happened there? So I start to think about it. And I start to feel into it. And some answers sometimes come back to me. And sometimes it's just, I was tired. I couldn't think straight. I was overwhelmed, whatever. And that's also human and it's okay. You know, right. there's no point in beating yourself up because that doesn't resolve anything. And all it does is it makes you feel worse. And next time you might even contract even more as opposed to expanding yourself, which is what we teach is about self-expansion. Love that. Self-expansion is so beautiful once you start to embody it, because what you find is that it's not so much having to, it's a, it's so much work at first. I will say that because you have to pay attention to every thought that comes through sitting with it and spending time with it. So it's a lot of work and it eventually gets to the point where those thoughts don't even come in because you know already that you know what's true and what's not true. And it's really kind of amazing because you start to see everything for you. I, sometimes when I hear myself talk, I'm like, that sounds very Pollyanna. But it sounds like I'm everything rose colored glasses. No, I'm still human and things suck sometimes. Yep. And I, I am able to identify, all right, is this serving me in some way? Let me, let me think about that for a minute. And then also it's not suggesting that thoughts don't creep in ever. If something goes awry and like it was a human mistake, but to your point, it's not sitting and dwelling on the fact that you did something wrong. It's like, all right. And often and there's something to learn, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something to learn from this experience, something we, we haven't seen before or something that we've been suspecting and it's suddenly there's clarity around it. Because mm -hmm. of course we always learn from our mistakes. And really there is no mistake. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it, right? It's just learning experiences as yeah. we grow and self-actualize. Inherently, there's nothing good or bad in life yeah. and life isn't good or bad. There's things that you do or do not do. There would be coming up from a mistake or like things that were, were to happen or not to happen. You will not miss anything that is meant for you. So exactly. the roads not taken or the doors that were closed. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome gifts. Yes. It's all a matter of perspective, right? It is. It is. It's a little bit of choosing. For me, what happened was that everything always happened to me before I in, experienced my awakening. Everything was to me. Oh gosh, can I get a break? Oh my gosh. I, woe is me, everything. And then now it's this beautiful place where I'm like, oh, somebody's trying to get my attention. And sometimes it's my spirit team, my guides, like trying to give me a heads up about something. Or sometimes it's, oh, interesting. Okay. 
let me understand this, this signal. The universe is talking to us all day, every day. And the other thing I've noticed to your point is that sometimes the, the lessons that we're taught are pretty harsh because mm-hmm. we didn't listen before when the lesson would have been much gentler, but we didn't want to see it, right? We didn't want to see it. We didn't want to deal with it. We just kept going. And eventually the universe was like, oh, no, you got to wake up now for your own good. Like wake up, open up, awaken. It's like, oh, oh, that was hard, but now I get it. Especially right now with all that's happening in the world. And this is kind of, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes to talk about with people that are really feeling it. Yes. It's yes. Really hard um, yes. because they don't want to hear Yes. They don't want to hear that it's happening for them. What I see on a, like a universe holistic big picture is that humanity is going to keep getting more pinched until the divine feminine is ushered back in to restore the balance. That's the pinch. I I get questions all the time because I'm very extremely connected to spirit and I have incredible gifts that I'm able to communicate with those you can't see. And I'll get questions like, do they trick you? Are they, are they trying to like, basically like the question is like, are they trying to fuck with me? And I'm like, I'm like, no, (laughs) I'm like, no, because on the soul plane, there is no trickery. There's no tomfoolery. There's no facetious. There's no harshness. It's, it is all for a lesson. And believe it or not, when you start to awaken to your soul and your spirit, you start to remember that you signed on for these lessons in this human life. And that gets, again, that's a way bigger conversation, but that you start to understand that it's like on the soul plane, you can't fathom some of these experiences on the human realm. So you sign up for them because you're like, oh, cool. I want to feel that. And then you're here. You're like, oh shit. (laughs) I didn't really want to feel that. (laughs) I really didn't want to feel that, but here I am. And that's when you're called on that's when you're called to remember who you are on the soul plane. So you're like, Oh, right. Okay. I got this. I got this. Yeah. It's fascinating. It really is. Yeah. I totally agree. So the third thing, which is, I'm really excited about this. We're looking to ally ourselves with some uh, women's groups or even um, other organizations that are really supporting the vision that we have for women, which is really, as you say, to bring the divine feminine back and to also encourage and support women into becoming everything they can be without holding themselves back because we need a totally different world don't we we need a world where both men and women work together not when one is trying to take the other down or subordinating the other or anything like this so this is our big vision we would love to connect with some allies that are out there in the world doing some of the work that we're doing so that's our third and definitely not the least important of what we're looking to uh, to do going forward. So yeah, we're very excited about that. And this is super timely. There is a project called Intimacy Justice. When you say men and women working beautifully together in a balanced relationship where both feel safe. Yes. Something we're working toward. There's something that has been alive and well for a long time, which is social media, the internet, SEO, you know, search engine optimization, everything works on algorithms. Yes. There's a human that codes those algorithms. And historically, more often than not, that is a man coding those algorithms. So what that has come to look like, and most recently, I just got out of LinkedIn jail because I said the word vagina on a post and I got flagged for like obscenity or, you know, things like that. And we're like, oh, dear creator. (laughs) That is a body part vagina. And so the reason I get, I'm, so I'm real, I'm, I'm a little angsty about it right now because a woman's anatomy is not to be discussed on a platform like LinkedIn. And Cindy Gallup is one of my favorite founders of uh, make love, not porn. And it's a social sex movement and her content gets banned everywhere. So When you talk about allies to partner up with, Intimacy Justice is working on making sure that women's anatomy and and words like vagina aren't banned, you know, and that's just, that's an understanding of the fact that there's a difference between anatomy and talking about anatomy and the health, by the way, of anatomy, especially with women and talking about quote unquote obscenities, which- absolutely. 
don't get me started on the words that are used for that part. And if I'm saying vagina, I'm talking about likely vaginal health. There was, and the reason I got banned was that, um, I had a podcast episode with Sherry Palm. She is the director of association of pelvic organ prolapse, which is one in every two women in lifetime will get this because of the virtue of how our parts are constructed. And the, the title of the episode was get comfortable saying vagina. Oh gosh, LinkedIn buried it like no tomorrow. So, so what's amazing about that is that I, the day I got put in LinkedIn jail for that, I was on a women's networking of 50 women. It was an open floor. Like who has something to start? I was like, I do. I just got put in LinkedIn jail because I said vagina. So the 50 women went to my LinkedIn page and organically pulled that post up to amplify it across. So I get really excited, obviously, when you talk about (laughs) working with different organizations to work on the allyship of making sure that the really amazing intention, especially as we know, women's anatomy was not included in the Western medicine textbooks until the nineties, like get, get out of here, you know? So we've got a lot of work to do. So I think about those types of things and I feel like it would, might be a cool opportunity to work with that organization. Sure. And I'm, I'm open to even going to some of your networking events. Awesome. That's what was like, I was floored that day because what an amazing organic grassroots impact that women make. That's the ripple effect that we're all making every day worldwide. Women are actively working to restore the balance. And it's not that we don't need men. It's like, we actually need, we need more men to understand the inequalities and like what's actually happening instead of turning a blind eye because it's uncomfortable. And I like the fact that there's so many women working in different ways, right? They're approaching it in different ways from different perspectives and in different platforms and venues. You make a really huge impact, right? So yeah, I think it's it's pretty awesome. I'm I'm very excited about it too. And that I the reason why I say we need a lot more because no one can do what we do individually, how we do it. So for yeah. instance, I get pretty ragey. So like what I like to say is I I rally the women, we get real pissed off, and then we move through to yeah. inspire passion and take action. That's kind of like where I sit. Whereas other women are like, let's be softer. I'm like, nope, that's not me. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in and piss a lot of people off and then we're gonna move through it together. All right. So now moving into more of a, a passion post of what you've talked about recently. What's something that you feel very passionately about and have a strong stance on? Yeah, so I my most recent post actually was after a long absence from LinkedIn. And it had to do with the fact that I lost my father a couple of months back. And so I took a I took a step back. And as a matter of fact, my business partner lost her father a few weeks before me. So the two of us are going through this very profound loss. It was the last living family member for both of us. So it's, you know, it set us back to think about self-care, to think about healing and slowing down and allowing ourselves that time. Because as you know, in our culture, you have to keep going all the time and you push through and you force yourself and you set aside grief and you set aside the things that your soul needs, your heart needs. So when your heart is broken, you need to give yourself the time to recharge You need to give yourself the time to go to a different place, more inner, as opposed to constantly focusing on outward productivity. So for the rest of this year, we have both decided we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a break. And instead of pushing things forward, we're going to try more allowing and attracting and having that little bit of a gentler approach that you were saying, just because of where we're at and we're recognizing we're in transition and we're in a transformative time. So to be able to allow for that to happen, we need to step back a little bit from those outer things that we're constantly doing. Now, I realize for many women, this is very difficult because they have families, they may have small children, they have responsibilities toward elderly parents. And yet I really, really suggest if you can, even a few minutes, just to step back a bit, delegate some stuff, get some help in. A lot of women don't, are really afraid to ask for help. No, no, I have to do everything by myself. Ask for some help and take some time for yourself. Because, you know, when my mom died nine years ago, I took a year off. I had adrenal fatigue. I was exhausted. I had burnout. I moved to Spain and I had a year in a really beautiful place in Malaga. I had an apartment on the beach and it was absolutely gorgeous. But I was so distressed about allowing myself that time that I kept pushing. You need to get back to work. You need to make a difference. 
And I, when I look back on it now, I think, my gosh, you know, you had such an opportunity and you made yourself miserable by not allowing yourself that. Now I see the difference in myself. I'm in a very different place and I understand that this is what I need right now. And I'm going to honor that process. We need to bottle that energy somehow so that others can like drink it when um, we're feeling this way, because especially any loss is an ending. And there's ver- there's varying and levels. There's grief. Of, there's grief. And I did not lose someone a year ago. Well, actually, I have lost myself. So I don't mean to compare against losing your father or like losing someone. There's no comparisons. Grief is grief and it's many, yeah. many manifestations, right? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. So I had left the corporate world after 20, almost 20 years and to embark on something. I didn't even know what I was going to do. You know, I said, today's my last day and I didn't know what I was going to do, but I just, I knew that I could not keep going. I could keep going. I did not want to keep going the way that I was. I was a shell of myself and I would have gotten to the point where physically I would have removed myself from the world and I deserve better. And I have a lot more to do on this realm. So the reason I bring that up is that there are still days where I channel my programming that'll come up. So for instance, Monday, I had a little bit of a lighter day and it was like Monday afternoon and I had nothing to do. And I felt a moment of panic. I was like, right. And I love what you said about looking back and, you know, all of that, especially the time on the beach for you, it wasn't for not, you can look back and recall the fact that that was your intentional pause. And so I try to, I try to give myself grace for the fact that those are still going to come up. I'm 41. So it's like 40 years against one year, not against 40 years. And the last year when I've been really pivoting everything. And so it's bound to come up, but it's also giving the space to be like, you got this. You're making a difference by giving yourself rest right now. Okay. Sure. So many women are going through that process of having lost themselves. And to be honest with you, that's probably the worst type of loss to endure Ugh. because there's also no nomenclature for it. Nobody talks about this. Nobody knows. Nobody says anything. This is probably one of the hidden traumas that we all carry. And so many women lose themselves because they try to force themselves to fit in a particular mold, right? And then you wake up and you go, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. This is killing me on every level, right? Physically, emotionally, spiritually, it's killing my soul. I need to do something else. And to be able to honor that and take the time out, sort yourself out, do some meditation, go on a retreat, whatever it is you need to do to figure it out, it's it's huge. I mean, as you say, this is the way you're serving the world. Yes, I have found, Ilana, there's a big part of me that when I started my business earlier this year, my kind of mission statement, I don't want one more woman to lose herself in a world that wasn't designed for her. And now I also know that as we spoke before, sometimes it takes those really severe things happening in the 3D to help you wake up. It's not up to me to like wake someone up for them. They have to do it and then seek me out. So I don't look for clients. Clients find me based on where they're feeling and something that I, that I say resonates with them. But I do want to share, and I'm, I'm thinking about like a post I'm going to make soon. Because of the way we've been programmed and trained, women are supposed to just plow through it, figure it out. We just always do. There's this meme that it's like, we might have a good cry in bed and then we're going to get up, put our hair up in a bun and keep going. It's, uh, it's all of that and saying we've all been through a pandemic. And for those of us who are, that survived the pandemic, we're trying to thrive. None of us have ever done this. None of us have ever come out on the other side of a pandemic on this earth right now. We're all trying to figure it out. Life's really hard right now, the 3D life. So the more that you can get in touch with yourself and go back inward, the more beautiful it can get. And so that's what I help women try to understand. It's not about, I personally feel coaches are filling the gaps where society is not equipped to help right now. That's where we come in and say, okay, what do you need? What do we need to do? Where do you want to go? And so I try to convey to women, think about the things that you're like, I couldn't possibly. And if by one degree, what could you do? That starts opening the door for her to start returning to herself. 
Exactly. And, and once you have that figured out, once, once you know you navigate your way to that place, it actually changes the entire landscape of your life. Yeah. And so that's why this work is so important and, and getting to know yourself. And, you know, honestly, this is the winter, you know, it's winter in the Northern hemisphere. This is a time when ancient peoples used to go back inside. We have Christmas. So everybody's running around Black Friday, trying to get Christmas presents, going super busy. This is actually not how the system is designed to work. This is when we're supposed to slow down, quiet, go inside, do meditations, do that, the, the, whatever gets us closer to our own internal being, because really that's where the compass is, right? It's inside, not outside. I love that. That's where the compass is. In that journey, you might need to release the people, places, and things closest to you that don't support that. And that starts to get really hard too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is why a community of like-minded women, like-minded individuals who can support you through this transition is so important. So one of the things that we teach when we go into these organizations and have these programs, we encourage women to create their own inner community inside the organization, right? So they can meet with each other and they can help each other out. Somebody runs into a situation. I don't know how to handle this. And you have other women supporting you and giving you ideas and brainstorming. You're never alone that way. And that's the whole thing that we want to also emphasize. Really, sometimes we all feel so alone in our struggles. And the truth is that we don't have to be. And so creating this kind of community on every level, I think is so important. Moving ahead in a community way, the collaboration and the support of each other is, I think, is how you're going to create a different world moving forward, right? Right. And I love how you say create kind of your almost like a microcosm of uh, like within the bigger community, because you still need to find the squad, the people that depending on how much you believe on from the soul plane or like soul teams, you want to find your team, the ones that you're like, oh, it's good to see you again. And it fits and it, it's pretty incredible. So thank you for the work that you do. And I'm, I want to get more involved. So hopefully you'll invite me on that. Ilana, what would you say to those out there that maybe, you know, that vibe with what we're saying? And what would you also say to those who kind of don't understand? Yeah. So, you know, it's very interesting because I'm, I'm going to address this in the context of men because, um, you know, our work is, our company is called Empowered Women Now. So it's very in your face, right? And I've ran into two very distinct groups of men. There's also the men who are very ambivalent, but then there's two other distinct groups. There's the men who say, oh, I love what you're doing. We need a man's program too, right? Because we are also programmed and we need, we need to be programmed. So to that, I say, thank you so much. Not right now, not me. Maybe at some other point. Yeah. But they, they also know that the way they've been programmed is not helpful to them either. These are men who understand and who can see that there's such a disconnect sometimes between men and women. So that's one camp. And then there's the other camp of men who feel attacked, who feel disempowered, who feel emasculated when you even say a phrase like empowered women. So often these are men who have been traumatized before, who have seen women as the enemy, as the controller, as, you know, the somebody who's harmed them in some way. So I, w I just want to address this and say empowered women has nothing to do with man hating. We don't want to take you down. We don't want to destroy you. We all we are seeking is an equal place at the table of life so that we can collaborate together as equals all over the world. And create a better world for every single human being and animal and plant and the whole ecosystem. Because we are so part of everything, right? And this is where Western man has just man, Western society has truncated itself from the rest of the world, which is, you know, a huge mistake. And, and look at what's happening around us, right? So this is what I want to say to these men. Please don't be afraid. Please don't feel like you're being threatened. Nobody's going to take anything away from you. Just because of the programming women have had, they're not willing to step up. I just want to share with you, I recently spoke to a woman and told her about her program. And she said to me, you know, she said, looking back at my life, and she's like, I would say she's around 60. I realize now, just talking to you, she said that my whole life I have held myself back. I haven't achieved, I haven't tried to achieve anything greater than my father or my brother. 
because I felt that I would be disempowering them and undermining them by achieving whatever I could. And she looked at me and she said, and I realize how wrong that thinking is. Wow. Imagine this magnified with so many other women in the world. This is a lose, lose scenario when women hold themselves back. It's a lose for men. It's a lose for women. It's a losing game for the world because we all need to shine our light as brightly as we can. I don't know if you know this, the Dalai Lama said the world will be saved by the Western woman, right? So I don't know exactly what he had in mind, but what I see is that we have the most resources, the most education and the most freedom of all women in the world. And it's up to us to start that change that we want to see happen everywhere. And to me, as long as there's one woman that's oppressed in the world, then that's my own oppression. And I would like to see a very different scenario out there someday, probably not in my lifetime, but to start that process is to be part of something so much greater. And that makes me very enthusiastic and very joyful to contemplate that. Mm. We are the change. We're doing it now. If we think about (laughs) my sacred rage is rising uh, toward the men who are feeling, and I do give space and grace to the men that feel unsafe by the idea that there's going to be more space for people who do not look like them being, you know, women and people of color. They feel unsafe and insecure. They feel they've been taught. This all came from a learning. Absolutely. The fact is, when I say the divine feminine is calling, that is part of what we will do as women. And I'm getting there is to provide safety and security to those men who don't feel safe and secure, which is why they're lashing out in these different ways and tightening the screws on women's autonomy and different, not just women, human rights in general for people that don't look like them. So the more we can figure out, and I love what you said, for all people to have a seat in the table of life, that's beautiful. Equal equal seat, right? Equal seat in the table of life. The more that we can invite and we being whomever as humans, the more everyone can feel secure to to explore and amplify their unique brilliance. And how beautiful will that world be? Absolutely. And there's there's no need for, you know, fear or trepidation or what's going to happen. The other reason I know sometimes uh, men have this idea is because I have seen women sometimes in leadership roles who are very aggressive and they're very uh, harsh. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we teach women in our courses is that you don't have to be that way. You don't have to think that you need to be like a man and and to just drown out your uh, femininity or your heart and become really hard because, you know, business is business and that kind of idea. Business is life. Life is this, everything is life, right? And we are always all connected. There's no reason to be that way. There is a way to be empowered without being harsh and aggressive. So this is also introducing men to this idea and to see how they respond. And then I think there's much less feeling of not being safe when they are with someone who is strong and assertive without being aggressive and punishing and and feeling that they have to have the last word or shrill or whatever whatever it might be and men can be shrill too right so i'm not using words that are just but there's this whole idea that we can be who we are we bring our true selves to this table of life and that's when everyone benefits exactly what you said was your dad supportive of this work oh my gosh i cannot tell you he was like my biggest fan He absolutely loved what I was doing. My mother was a judge and a lawyer. She was a very powerful woman and he admired her greatly. And he said, she would be so proud of you, what you're doing right now, because you're making a difference to those women who need you so much. So yeah, this is one of the things I miss about him being gone. I'd like to share something with you on a spiritual level and about your dad. Is that okay? Sure. There has been an orb drop in twice above you. And it's a pure white light. It's him. He's dropped in twice during the episode. I don't know if the video will have picked it up, but I saw it twice. Thank you. He was a really sweet, lovely man. 
Ilana, closing remarks as we wind down. I just really want to thank you for this opportunity. It's been such a lovely conversation on so many levels. I also want to encourage anyone to not get so hung up on the outer events that are happening that are often so very, very difficult to stomach. Just to remember that there is a higher purpose and that you do have an internal voice that is always there to encourage you, to support you, and to kind of hang on to. And cultivating that relationship with your inner person is probably the most important work that you can do so that you can become that light for others. And shining your light brightly in the world and helping others shine theirs is how we change the world on every single day, every single minute. Let's all work together to do that in our own uh, particular way. Ilana, where do we find you? Our company is uh, www.empoweredwomennow.com and my email is hello at empoweredwomennow.com. Thanks, Alana. Thank you so much.